Yeah, we can start. Okay, please welcome uh, Anton Babenko, uh, CEO of BetterJob. He's going to present to us some rather complex uh, Terraform use cases. I'm uh, keen to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Anton. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And uh, I will try to uh, explain maybe in some mm, kind of maybe some unusual way of uh, thinking about Terraform. So first of all, uh, the title of the talk, as you can see, is uh, pointing three keywords. is like gotcha, Terraform, and secure, or actually even more, delivery pipeline. So, <laughs> so let's get started. So first of all, uh, we'll uh, see what are key concepts in Terraform and how they are related to CI CD pipeline and how Terraform can be used. And then I will go into frequent Terraform problems uh, which I uh, experienced. So first of all, who am I? Uh, I live in Norway and I, uh, I'm originally from Ukraine. So it's my first time in Singapore and in Asia in general. I'm kind of very excited. It's very hot here, but at the same time it's very cold inside. So, <laughs> so that's why I have this uh, jacket. Um, I like to call myself as Terraform and AWS fanatic because that's what I've been doing for the last many years. And uh, in my spare time I organize uh, different events, different conferences in Norway and meetups. So uh, I organize HashiCorp user group and AWS uh, user groups in Oslo. And I actively contribute to different open source projects, mostly related with Terraform uh, modules and some things in between. So if you have any questions about this talk or anything what I'm going to mention, don't hesitate to send me a message on any of this channel. So uh, as Michael just mentioned, I work for a company called BetterJob. That's my own consultancy company where I spread love about these technologies which I'm going to talk about. And uh, I also contribute to Terraform AWS modules, uh, which we'll cover in much more details later on. And uh, yeah, that's another project which I'm working on. Modules.tf, to not confuse that TF is not related to TensorFlow, which uh, I'm sure you've heard multiple times during the last couple of days. And yeah, that's not about TensorFlow. So uh, first of all, who knows what is Terraform? Like, excellent, excellent. So much more than half, that's really good because in this talk, I'm not going to tell you what is Terraform. So I assume that you can go to a website like terraform.io, read documentation, see some code, uh, see what is it, and kind of uh, get the feeling, what is it. Uh, just as a summary, uh, Terraform is a tool to write, plan, and create infrastructure as code. Uh, uh, there will be talk uh, by Seth Varga, five o'clock in uh, lecture theater about infrastructure as code and ev actually everything as code. So if you are like me who like to describe everything as code, please go there and uh, learn what else you can actually describe as code. I'm sure you will uh, get some points which are pretty new. So uh, this is traditional AWS uh, infrastructure for multi-tier uh, application, which consists of some load balancer, and some uh, auto-scaling group with Frontier, and some uh, web servers, and some databases, and so on. So that's traditional set of resources which we can create in AWS console and uh, get our project up and running. Uh, so normal way, or like last generation way, is going to AWS console, click, 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 and then you have something like this, and your service is up and running. But uh, it's not so good much better approach is actually to describe this as a code, where in this example you can see that uh, we are creating AWS S3 bucket with specific name, and uh, this name is actually consistent some random value, which is random path resource, and then we output this value. So this is how typical uh, Terraform configuration code looks like. Uh, after you describe this uh, infrastructure like this, you run Terraform init to download some dependencies, and then you run Terraform apply to see what's going to be applied. So here you can see plan that it's going to create a couple of resources, and then you confirm that yes, that's what I want. And at the end you get this uh, nice my bucket sysnail as 
name of the bucket which was just created. So that's eventually the whole purpose of Terraform, nothing else. But uh, why CI-CD uh, pipeline uh, is important? So the whole idea is that uh, it gives you clear uh, identification of bottlenecks and you can fix them faster and uh, move along much uh, more confident. So typical uh, CI-CD pipeline consists of uh, steps uh, where developers write code, commit this code into Git and then execute some CI pipeline uh, and then after some unit test or functional test passed then uh, this code or this change is actually passed to continuous delivery pipeline and it was reviewed by human or by some other things and then it was uh, or then it will be deployed to a stage environment and eventually to production so this image is uh, uh, taken from GitLab documentation and uh, <laughs> I'm glad that uh, previous talk was about GitLab as well. So yeah, guys, this is how GitLab use it. So uh, getting started uh, with Terraform, is, in fact, is very easy. You go to documentation, you read it, you write it. Right? You read documentation, you think that things uh, looks easy. Then you copy resource code from documentation, you write it. Terraform apply, you're happy, and it works. I mean, yes, it works, but only 60% of the time because you have one developer developer on Windows, then you have some difficulties with uh, configurations and yeah, it can be different surprises. So you think like, okay, what's next? Like how to actually improve my code? And then you figure out that concept of modules is, uh, is there. So the purpose of Terraform modules is that you don't have to be the smartest person if you're solving a recurring task for example, uh, if you are making a uh, virtual private uh, or v VPC on uh, AWS, believe me, you're not the first guy on the planet who do this. So yes, there is a module for that. So don't try to invent things uh, which were solved by uh, many, many, literally thousands of people before you. So registry.terraform.io uh, is a place where currently more than 300 modules are hosted and uh, the, um, Terraform AWS modules repository is a place where I manage a significant amount of uh, Terraform AWS modules uh, used by thousands of people. So as a fact, there were, I don't know, like at least half million of downloads uh, so far and people are using it and commenting and uh, contributing new features. So I encourage you to check this one before solving reoccurring things. Uh, Terraform Workspace is a feature which is internally uh, provided by uh, Terraform to allow you to split your code <coughs> and to uh, be able to execute this code in slightly different way. Uh, if you read documentation and think this is some magic which can help you further on, don't think so and skip it and don't use it really. So talking about CI CD tools uh, which are available now, there are managed systems like Circle CI and Travis CI and many others. And also if you are uh, not uh, willing to use managed service and you like to manage things yourself, uh, there are plugins for Concourse, Drone, Jenkins, even for Ansible. So you can use uh, plenty of different ways to run Terraform. But uh, again, Bash will be required uh, extremely often because you still have to call uh, Terraform with different parameters and configure it differently. So Bash is your best friend still. There is no better support than that. Atlantis is uh, another tool which, uh, which uh, was specifically made uh, to simplify workflow collaboration using features of GitHub and GitLab. Uh, it's a very young project, I would say, and, but nevertheless it's used by, I, I guess, dozens of people worldwide, and it's open source, and uh, it, it has some pretty nice features, especially if you don't have budget to pay for Traform Enterprise, but still want to have some features like um, pull request locking so that only one 
uh, pull request can be merged at the same time so there are no conflicts where people change the same resource multiple times and one override another one. So this uh, tools like uh, Terraform Enterprise and uh, Atlantis can solve for you. Uh, Terraform Enterprise uh, is uh, built on top of uh, Terraform open source where you have graphical user interface for common features like uh, plan apply and so on. So uh, right now we have seen how Terraform code looks like, what are CI CD options. So let's look into specific continuous integration and continuous deliveries gochas which are related to Terraform. So first of all, if you are going to run uh, Terraform in CI CD pipeline, the only option which you have uh, related to state management is having a remote state only, like exclusively. Second thing which you have to know is, or which you have to take into account, is how you're going to handle errors. For example, if Terraform uh, is executing and there are some errors in the middle by many different reasons, Terraform will not be able to roll back to previous state or will change your resources to the previous state. So you will have to fix it yourself. There are multiple interesting challenges with this and how you can solve it. Uh, most uh, simplified is give it another try and maybe things work this time. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. If it doesn't work, you can say that, hey, Terraform, don't try to make things so smart and run it in six parallel uh, API calls to the same providers. So let's keep parallelism to one. It means that uh, sequence will be um, reduced, so it will be just sequential execution of API calls. But uh, it may help you with eventual consistencies, problems, uh, or API can say that, hey, you're changing too many things at the same time. So try to reduce it. And also uh, uh, detailed exit code can be handy if you want to see is it actually a problem or new resources has to be changed. So once uh, you uh, uh, run Terraform in uh, CI CD, you have to make sure that uh, you always get the same dependencies uh, as before. So for example, you can version your uh, you, you can stick to specific version of providers and to specific version of uh, um, of Terraform itself. There are solutions for that. I will show later. Uh, and uh, once you run Terraform in it, uh, you have to uh, keep dot uh, Terraform directory uh, uh, between your executions. Uh, so this means that uh, once you run Terraform in it. Uh, nobody should be able to change files like uh, to replace your provider dependencies because they will they will already download it so there are uh, certain uh, challenges with uh, this if you just allow to execute terraform in it every time um, so yeah uh, things with private repositories uh, in particular on github is that once you start using uh, Terraform modules which were hosted in private uh, GitHub repositories uh, and you fork this private repository t to add your own features into it but the repository is still private. The funny thing is that once a maintainer of parent uh, private repository decide to delete it, your fork is also gone. So I think this is uh, kind of strange but uh, that's life. So if you fork someone private repository, make sure that you have a uh, proper, uh, proper copy of this uh, code somewhere else. I've been to a situation where a repository was deleted and somebody asked like, oh, why it was deleted? I forked it. Yeah, you forked, but it was still private. So anyway, so moving next, uh, secrets. CI CD system uh, allow us to manage uh, secrets as part of the process, so which is fine. and. Uh, in very important point in Terraform is that everything secret or everything is stored in plain state file which is essentially a JSON file. So they will be stored in a decrypted way um, in many situations. Sometimes for uh, Terraform allowed to use PGP for, uh, for things like uh, AWS IAM 
username and uh, access secret keys. So make sure that you use uh, these features uh, if, if you can. Uh, also providers like relational database service has possibility to want to use uh, IAM to authenticate users. Uh, but even best approach for that is uh, once you use Terraform to create some resource using some sensitive data, make sure that you change this uh, password outside of Terraform later on. So uh, since password will not be tracked in Terraform internally, it will not tell you that, hey, this password was changed, so I want to uh, restore it. Password is almost always tracked outside of the system. So change it outside or change it as a uh, uh, post-execution hook or anything like that. So one of example is random string uh, password. So if I want to generate random password, that's typically how you can get random string with 10 characters. But the funny thing is that once I execute Terraform apply, I can still see this password here. And if you have this as an output of your CI server, you think that, oh, I, I prevent people from uh, executing my, um, uh, from executing my t Terraform configurations and nobody can see my state file. So now they, do, they don't have possibility to see what is in state file, but they can simply see it in output and they can see password as plain text here, which is a bit strange. So kind of obvious situation, but again, pretty important. So just don't store passwords. Talking about uh, uh, access control principles is principle of least privilege is uh, uh, or should be taken into account very seriously. Uh, talking about uh, access control principles in terms of uh, AWS, I am, is that grant only the permission required to perform task. So, but even more specifically, talking about AWS and Terraform, uh, one of uh, pattern which I encourage people to use is that an example, when you run Terraform init, refresh, validate, plan, and a few other commands, you don't actually need to have a uh, possibility to change resources which you have on AWS or any other provider. So it's enough to just have read-only access by assuming read-only IAM role. So this IAM role will allow you to uh, read uh, things from DynamoDB, from S3 bucket, and can uh, read resources and describe resources on AWS, which is fine. But if you are about to apply this change, then yes, you have to actually assume admin role, which allows you to change these resources. And this, uh, the important factor here is that read-only role can be, apply, uh, can be assumed by anyone without specifying M MFA token, while admin uh, automatically expect a uh, multi-factor authentication token to be provided when assuming this role. Uh, so next thing about uh, securing delivery pipeline uh, is to ask people uh, and to make sure that they really want to apply what they uh, just created. So there are multiple things which people can use. For example, they can review pull requests of each other and say, hey, you probably don't want to uh, destroy this mega cluster, but maybe you wanted something else. Uh, GitHub control and to assign reviewers, for example, there is file called uh, code owners on GitHub where you can specify if files in this folder were changed, then assign uh, pull requests to this team. But uh, to have even more sophisticated uh, examples where you want to specify uh, if uh, changed in this folder, then I need to have plus one from this team and not more than one minus one from this team. So to make this kind of Gerrit-like uh, approval system, uh, guys from Capital One makes check out, checks out. So I have not used this myself uh, yet, but uh, I think it, it's pretty promising unless GitHub implement this natively. 
And it tightly depends on how you structure your code. So I, I hope that everything what I was talking so far was basics and you understand it and it's fine. So let's deep dive a little bit into Terraform design patterns and why they are important. So um, there are three types of uh, design patterns, which uh, uh, or the three types of uh, uh, structuring and thinking about Terraform code. So first is resource modules, infrastructure modules, and composition. So resource modules is uh, the, the, the main purpose of resource modules is obviously create resource, nothing else. Really, really, they don't have any relations between other Terraform modules. They are flexible in uh, what kind of arguments they accept, and they s usually support semantic versioning. So Terraform AWS modules is a good example of uh, just Terraform uh, resource modules. Infrastructure modules, on another side, is uh, uh, something what is on top of resource module, and usually I like to think about them as something what provides company-wide standards like tagging, naming, and passing these values into Terraform resource modules. And this is also a good example to full feature, uh, to fulfill missing parts of uh, Terraform and HCL. Uh, for example, you can use code generations like JSONnet, cookie cutter, and a few other things. And versioning is still important, but not as important, uh, let's say, to follow semantic version or anything else. But it's just good to have some versioning. Terraform composition is actually on top of infrastructure modules. And uh, uh, for those who don't know, uh, who here know what is TerraGrant? Great, so this is uh, unexplored market. <laughs> I see no one is using TerraGrant, so, but TerraGrant is a tool which allows you to write Terraform compositions and uh, manage uh, resources by regions, by environments, and kind of don't repeat yourself principles all over the place. So I highly encourage you to take a look on this and uh, see if it is uh, for your setup. So basic pipeline, uh, as I guess most of you uh, know, looks like this, that you work on your feature branch, you push code into this feature branch, then you open pull request, then pull request is somehow approved by some, someone, and code from this branch is merged into master. And then you execute Terraform apply on the master branch. So the master branch uh, contains a single uh, source of truth for the code and for the infrastructure in general. So sample pipeline when using Circle CI looks like this, is that code is, uh, here you cannot see, but here is, uh, the code is fetched from Git uh, Hub repository, then code is validated that it doesn't contain syntax errors, code is uh, uh, run, through uh, Terraform plan stage, and then human approve that this infrastructure change looks good, and then this is applied. So all of this is described as code. Again, we have infrastructure as code, we have pipeline as code, and we will have more and more things as code. Re uh, that's absolutely required part. So pipeline for modules, uh, I guess we can skip this because we don't have too much time, but it's cool, and I will uh, put these slides somewhere. Um, and there are a bunch of tools which uh, I can just briefly say. If you are like me who likes to pay attention to code uh, style and don't discuss, hey, you forgot space here. Hey, uh, can you move these uh, curly brackets to a new line? Really, that's not the thing which we have to discuss in 21st century, or at least 2018. Uh, so. Uh, there is another project which doesn't seem to be so much updated, TFLint, um, but uh, it's still a good tool to run and to be able to make sure that your code is actually, is actually in good condition, it doesn't violate any principles. And yeah, that's it. So keep calm and automate everything. Kind of obvious, but not so much, because really, uh, all this can be automated? No, not everything. So there are a bunch of things which pipeline cannot do for you. Refactoring is a good example for that. So uh, Terraform State MV is uh, your, your kind of command of choice when you have to move uh, resources between state file or if you do refactoring in Terraform. 
uh, I was uh, running this uh, refactoring things for so long time that I decided to make terrible project out of it where I mean terrible is uh, is a uh, so first part terror is from terraform and Ible is part of ansible so this is project where I manage terraform configuration using ansible and uh, yeah it, it works well because I can uh, uh, refactor and do changes in um, about 1,000 of free sources just by executing sequentially similar commands in a loop. So in a loop of loop of loop, something like this. <laughs> so yeah, it looks terrible, but it works. So when it comes to Terraform upgrade, so you, uh, you was using one version of Terraform and then you think, wow, new version came out, so I want to upgrade. So you upgrade and everything break. So, which is not very often situation, but still it happens sometime. And the way how Terraform handles state file is uh, if you already upgraded your state file to a newer version, you cannot roll back to previous version so easily and say, hey, oh yeah, I know that this version doesn't work, so let me roll back my version. So you have to do some magic, uh, literally like this, to download previous version of your state file and to push it as a current version to Terraform so the Terraform can actually use it. Uh, Atlantis is a good tool to uh, help you with force unlock. Force unlock is necessary when somebody execute one command and close laptop, for example, and think that it will finish by himself or by itself. No, it will not finish, unfortunately. So you have to sit and wait when your RDS database is being deleted. It can take some time. or uh, yeah, there are some resources which can take 20 minutes to delete. So Atlantis can help you with this. Again, it has support for unlocking. Demo, the code is on this one, but uh, I'm, I'm not very much sure that it will work. Yeah, because, uh, no, maybe I can try here. Do you see my screen? Not so much. So this is how configuration, can you see it? So this is how configuration for, uh, for this looks like. So I define which version of Terraform I want, where I want to have state file, in which region. Yes, I'm from Europe. And then I specify which version of AWS provider I want. And I use data source to discover already created resources like default VPC and my licensor. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it will probably close by itself. But it's, it's life, really. I'm trying to demo this stuff for three times and never succeed. And yeah, anyway, let's try it like this. You don't want me to pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, yeah, so here I discover, maybe I can try to evaluate for free, evaluate, accept, yes, cool, I have half hour to finish this. Um, so I, I get information about uh, VPC subnets and which uh, Amazon mach machine image I want to use. So then I'm calling a couple uh, Terraform AWS modules of specific versions where I specify which security group uh, I want to make. So SG is not shortcut for Singapore. Uh, it is shortcut for security group. And here I'm making one security group uh, which opens all HTTP port, port 80, some other ports. And then I'm calling another module called EC2 to make instance with provided uh, values. And then I'm assigning this uh, Elastic IP address to the instance which was just launched. So that's it. As a, uh, as a result, mm -hmm. right. No, not right. So uh, when I run Terraform in it, uh, no, I, I probably can show, I executed this earlier today, so it worked like this. This is in case internet doesn't work, <laughs> and internet doesn't work now. So when I run uh, 
uh, Terraform get information about already existing resources like uh, VPC, Amazon Machine Image, and so on. And then it tells me what is going to be created. So in this case, Elastic IP address will be created and few other resources which I just showed code for. So once I say yes, then this information is, then this plan is actually executed and it creates uh, resources in different order. So the ordering of uh, resources is the best part of, uh, uh, of Terraform. You never have to specify uh, which resources have to be created first, second, and so on. So you, you just pass ID from one resource into another one, and Terraform will identify the dependency graph and build infrastructure uh, in a very smart way. In many situations, it is faster than uh, using, for example, CloudFormation. <clears throat> That's fact, and uh, yeah. So once these resources were created, then it outputs public IP address like this. And then I specify that I want to destroy it, because I don't need this anymore. I run Terraform destroy, and a bunch of resources uh, should be deleted, and I say yes again, and it destroy it. So that's the whole life cycle. Uh, where I describe infrastructure, I created this infrastructure, I do whatever I want, and I destroy it. So going back to slides, I have one or two slides. The summary is uh, CI-CD uh, tool is good, and it's really uh, brilliant for making automated things. But uh, there are a lot of things where CI-CD tool cannot help you. Uh, or it cannot help you uh, at all, or it can help you just for a small fraction. So, and always use minimum, uh, minimal roles and, S and uh, make sure that you use MFA. Even if your CI system uh, is hidden and protected and everything is fine, still it's better to make sure that MFA is provided. And uh, for those interested in Terraform and modules and workflows, uh, I will be talking uh, on Monday on AWS uh, Meetup uh, about Terraform modules and uh, yeah, it's free Meetup and everyone is welcome to come to that one and there will be a lot of uh, uh, interesting stuff outside of uh, today's talk. So feel free to go there. and. Uh, really the last thing which I want to get from this presentation is when you are thinking that Terraform is a cool tool and it has plenty of options and I have to use all of them at once, no, you don't have to, really. It's, it's important to use just minimum commands. So that's why uh, an example which I just showed you, I didn't pass any single arguments to command line because I just used uh, uh, Terraform apply. I didn't specify which var, which, uh, which uh, tfvars file I, I need to use and so on. And it's sometimes hard to use like that, but things like Terragrant simplify it a lot. So yeah, uh, I hope you have questions. Even if you don't ha have questions now, you can always reach me later. And I have a bunch of stickers uh, for this company, HashiCorp and uh, Terraform and few other things. So feel free to shoot your questions. You talked about multi-factor authentication. Sorry? Uh, you talked about multi-factor authentication. So how do you use uh, MFA from your CI? That is, you will be triggering the build. And where does the second factor of authentication come in? Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, that's the most tricky part to implement right now. So one of solution uh, which, so project where I work now, we are transitioning from using it in uh, uh, Circle CI to Concourse. So there we most likely will not have this kind of MFA there, but there will be there will be. Uh, there will be implementation of check uh, who is like um, if your GitHub username have access 
to this project as admin or as write, then we assume that we are good enough. So we don't have this check for MFA on AWS IAM role. But uh, when it comes to, I I'm a big fan of executing Terraform uh, from my local machine in exactly the same way, exactly the same uh, procedures as uh, CI would do. But uh, the way where I provide MFA from my local machine is that uh, I have, uh, I have uh, possibility to assume role um, before executing uh, Terraform. Uh, so I have a uh, shell script which uh, use my uh, IAM credentials uh, which are valid for one hour. So really every hour or so I have to type uh, my MFA token from OT to terminal. Uh, it is possible to automate it, but uh, it's very hard to, uh, to make it uh, like uh, really nice and user-friendly. Uh, I also consider another option of um, using, I don't remember, feature of LastPass, where you can uh, uh, get, or where you can send an application request to a user and say, hey, was it you who requested this? And uh, it can <coughs> raise a pop-up on mobile where he says that, yes, it was me. And then he presses this button and uh, it continues. Uh, I think LastPass and uh, either Okta or Duo, Duo Security, these two applications, I don't remember, they have this workflow. <coughs> so yeah, But it's very hard to implement it uh, nicely and uh, user-friendly. Uh, yeah, I can uh, probably mention a few other ideas which are more crazy, but they look, yeah, I mean, they should work. Yeah? How do you store the. For example, you show the uh, pipeline circle CI. So, how do you store the variable like value? For example, you create an IDS and it has the root password. So everything you you put that into the circle CI environment variable. Uh, so, t talking about uh, uh, t talking about uh, variables which come into uh, pipeline, like like the input of the uh, um, like everything that you need to put into the input of uh, Terraform. Yeah. So if it comes, to, there are a few ways how you can get data into Terraform. If it is secret data, then the only option which you have is uh, environment variable. So you can specify, so it looks like, um, uh, tf, yeah. So it looks like this, tf var underscore and then name of your variable. So this type role underscore type equal read only means that Terraform will know that there is role type with this value. Uh, and then you can use this in your configurations. Um, so uh, you can specify in uh, Circle CI environment variables which are available f on each build. Yeah. So you can, you can put some stuff there. But uh, again, if it's, if it's about secrets, then uh, the most recommended approach is to put tfr underscore uh, RDS password equal dummy or equal change me or equal never use this field anymore something like this and then change it once uh, terraform created it so then you connect you can use new resource to connect to the database once it's created and change it later but any other question Okay, yeah. so uh, thank you, Anton, and looking forward to your talk on Monday evening. Yeah. Hope to maybe see some of you there. Thank you. Thank you.